Another guy in the know is our buddy Tom Murphy, who now joins us this morning. Tom, it was uh, fun to catch up at SDC Media Days. I thought you asked some good questions, not just to Sam Pittman, but across the board last week. But really the headlines were stolen from Brent Zwornerman of the Houston Chronicle as he broke the news about Texas and Oklahoma, and we've seen a flurry of stuff happen since then. Tom, what pros and cons do you associate Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC and what it could do and what it could hurt Arkansas football? Yeah, if, well, good morning, everybody. If I'm Arkansas, I, you know, I've said it before. I did not think adding A&M and Missouri to the league was good for Arkansas, um, and I think the results have, have borne that out in football at least. And it's the same here. I mean, it just makes – you're very likely to be put into a division or a pod with both of these teams, I would think, or at least Oklahoma. I, I don't know, but um, it's it's first of all, you could recruit in Texas before A and M got in the league, and LSU could, and, and Bama, and so on. But you want to play SEC football, you, you got to come to one of our schools. But then A and M came in, and that was the end of that. And and our Arkansas recruited very well in Oklahoma and particularly just had a really good season re- recruiting Oklahoma. And if the Sooners are in the league, then, then there goes that line. Uh, so it just makes com- recruiting much more competitive and obviously competing on the field uh, will be tougher because these are programs that put so much into the, the sport, their facilities, and so on. So it wouldn't take them long to kind of get into the SEC groove of things. And, and because – it appears as if the playoff is going to expand to 12 teams. Those teams, those schools see an easier route and more money to by joining the SEC. Tom, if you're Bob Bowlesby, who's the commissioner of the Big 12, what is your next move after this news broke this weekend? Well, I'm glad I'm not that commissioner because <laughs> it's a tough deal. Apply for uh, a job with Greg Sankey. That's but... your move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just... Um, and I saw some stuff today. Like, do they raid the? Do they try to raid the Pac-12? The dominoes are going to keep going, and I just don't know if it's good for the long term. I don't, you know, relationships, the health of college football. Uh, perhaps the big schools are all at some point going to break off, and there'll be like a different quote pay scale. You know, different different NIL um, things that those schools, the athletes at those schools, can get. Um, but I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem to bode well for those schools. Uh, the ne- their next TV deal probably won't be as lucrative if all this takes place. So uh, I guess we're headed toward four mega conferences and mm-hmm. and uh, potential breakaway by the biggest schools. Yeah, you see all these tweets, and everyone's got a, a source in the league office, and all these things about twenty to twenty four other schools have reached out and. The league's entertaining the idea of expanding beyond that. I don't know how much truth is in some of those reports, but at what point do you cease to be a conference and you become an association? Is it 16? Is it 18? Is it 20? At, at what point is it no longer just a conference anymore, Tom? Yeah, when you get to 16, if, if you get to 16, then you know, you're know you barely hanging on to what I would consider the definition of a, of a conference. If you go beyond that, then yeah. It is it's an association. How do you even start playing? Mm-hmm. How do you judge a fair conference schedule at that point? You know, play the three members in your own pod and one each from the other three pods and two more random games. It's it's just bizarre. And um, they're going to get a – if this happens, if and it looks like it will, there will be a very, very lucrative TV deal coming up for the SEC, and they'll be the one who struck first. They'll be the one who started to reshape – college football and i do believe a part of this is there is, is greg sankey in the conferences frustration with the ncaa and not doing the things they're supposed to do it it's a huge organization and they're they're backed up with their uh infraction cases they uh don't seem to have any teeth when it comes to some of the infraction stuff and and they were on the wrong side of the NIL by a 9-0 to zero Supreme Court margin. So I think it's more about we'll just, we'll just start to play by our own rules at some point. 
And this is a huge step in that direction. You know, my brain works in a way I like clean, I like balance, I like those things. To, to me, you know, there's 65 teams counting Notre Dame that are kind of the power five. Uh, mm -hmm. Four 16-team conferences provide geographic balance, provide uh, power balance. I don't think it's good for the SEC to to outweigh the other leagues, nor, nor would it be good for any of the other leagues to be the same way. To me, it seems like the Big 12 gets gobbled up. I don't know who the 65th team is that doesn't make the cut. Uh, it won't be Notre Dame, of course, but uh, <laughs> but to me, it, it's clean if you had four 16-team leagues, and then those power four could become its own division, its own entity, or set its own course and its own rules moving forward, particularly regarding football. To me, that seems logical and has a lot of common sense or it makes sense to me tom but you know oftentimes common sense doesn't doesn't always uh, rise to the top in these conversations no it doesn't and, and i agree with you there's a certain uh, balance to that you know it, it, you're, like you say clean you know 16 times four is 64 mm -hmm. uh but i think rutgers would be your 65th by the way yeah that's just me <laughs> um but I don't know. It's just like, is that really going to happen? Is, I mean, it makes sense, but, you know, we we had a Big 12 that had 10 teams in it for the last decade or so. You know, we, we had a, a Big 10 that doesn't have 10 teams. So I, I don't know what what the end result is going to be, but it's, it's just uh, – it's like chaos theory, you know. Let's just keep doing these strange things. I love the 12. I love the 6 and 6. You got to play your own, you know, five in your own and three in the other, so half the other division, yeah. mm -hmm. and it made a lot of sense to me. But nine years ago, it felt like, well, you know, everybody's reorganizing and, and yeah. all these conferences are expanding, so we're going to do it too. And it was great for A&M in Missouri, um, and I guess the SEC got a better TV deal out of it, but I don't know how you, you rein it all in. And these guys are have – you know, they're playing three-dimensional chess or something, and, and I'm just looking at old-school chess. So there's these reports of 20 or 24 additional schools reaching out. Obviously, the league isn't going to consider every one of those calls, but who would be the one or two calls? To me, Notre Dame's the first call you've got to consider if they said, hey, we jump ship on the ACC and come to the SEC in a heartbeat along with Texas and Oklahoma. Who are who would be on that list for you that if you're Greg Sankey, if you're if you're sitting next to him, you're now his senior associate commissioner, Tom, who are those one or two other schools that, hey, we, we've got to take this call, Greg, that these are schools that got to be our 18th and 9th, 17th and 18th schools uh, in expansion? Well, you know, back in the old days, and, and I've read a ton of stuff on this, but, like, apparently South Carolina has veto power to block Clemson. That would be a good program to add to your conference. Florida State. Well, Florida supposedly has veto power to block Florida State because Florida is the lone school in the SEC in Florida. Well, A&M, I guess, thought they had it for Texas. But to me, those two schools make the most sense. But So you're really going to you know, go to 18 and, and create all this division and, and disharmony and, and all these other conferences? and we'll just leave them scrambling. I don't like the idea of it. So my suggestion would be, hey, let's subtract the two we added in 2012 and, and put it back down to 12, <laughs> uh, although that's not going to happen. Do geographic, ge geography even matter at this point? Because I think the sure. Notre Dame, yeah. but if you add Notre Dame, it's way up in South Bend, Indiana, Clemson, Southeastern Conference, that fits. But with Greg Sankey and his team, Tom, looking at this moving forward, the potential, the prospect of adding schools, does it matter? Not really. I mean, you know, West Virginia was in the Big 12. Mm -hmm. I think TCU a few years ago was in some conference, like Conference USA or Mountain West. I don't even remember, Big Big East. Uh, it, it was a weird deal and got rectified pretty soon. But anyway, no, it does not matter. And who knows? Ohio State would probably wouldn't mind breaking off and trying to play with the big boys down here because, you know, they belong. They clearly have shown they, they make the playoffs a lot and they beat beaten SEC team. So, no. The uh, geography of, of it all doesn't matter. And we're going to wind up with big mega conferences and it's going to be a new, a new era coming soon. I did see the report that 
apparently the schools knew everyone except for Texas A&M. What I want to know, if this has been going on for six months, I think it was Kirk Bowles of the Austin American Statesman Mm -hmm. that reported that. How did they keep Mm -hmm. it quiet for six months? How did no one come out with this until that, that, that if that is indeed the case, Tom, how did they keep it under wraps that long? That's pretty crazy. Uh, the the word had to be limited at each school, you know, to a very select handful of people at each of the schools. And apparently today was going to be the day, right, that Texas A&M and Oklahoma delivered their letters of resignation to the conference, which would have been an absolute bombshell. It was bombshell enough in, in Hoover, the way it was reported. But if, if it had been the way that people are reporting, uh, there would have been a point today where everyone would have just been aghast that had happened. Yeah. So I don't know how it's all going to shake out. I do think that the leak, so to speak, uh, last Wednesday in Hoover was probably a good thing because it allowed a lot of discussion. And they, they might not like it, the officials, but if A&M was going to rally any support to, to trying to block that, you know, they, they had a few days now. And the Big 12 got to have their discussions at the end of last week about what's our next step. And and I think in the next two weeks, we are going to see, we're going to start to see the picture clear up a little bit, and it's going to be wild. Well, I, for one, am all for OU and Texas coming on board, two eight-team divisions, nine-game schedules, and I'll trade a game every year with OU and Texas to shift Alabama and Auburn to the east, and uh, I think it would make our jobs infinitely more interesting to have OU and Texas every year on the football schedule. That, that, now, that is a clean look, Tommy, of uh, the two eight teams. Yeah. Bring Missouri one, over. Use basically the yep. Missouri schools and split everything else west of the Mississippi. And I think it's a fun it's a fun conference. You you play two teams from the east every year and play nine games. And I think you've got a you've got a fun, balanced conference at that point where you play everybody in, in, a, in about a four year rotation. Yeah. If, if, if this is going to happen, I like that one rather than the four team pod just because of it, it's cleaner to, to bring Missouri over, yeah. you're right, and just add the other two to the west and put Alabama and Auburn yep. back over to the other side, and, hey, let's roll. Well, and all the natural rivals stay intact. Alabama, mm-hmm. uh, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, all the, you know, the Iron Bowl, the Egg Bowl, uh, you know, Texas, Oklahoma, October. Texas, Texas A&M, all Alabama, I mean, uh, Ole Miss, uh, LSU, all the all the big ones. Uh, of course, the battle line rivalry, all the big ones, you know, <laughs> stay, stay same intact. Same breath. You, you just know, mentioned that. You same. know, stay intact. So going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure we'll be talking about it for weeks to come, Tom. Uh, have a great Monday, and we'll catch up Thursday. Sounds great, guys. Enjoy right. talking.